The book of Psalms is one of the most unique books in scripture. It's the longest, has 150 chapters in it. And it's different from most of the other books in scripture because the book of Psalms is really the song book of the Bible. They are songs that were once put to music. The music is lost to history, but we still have the words like a poem. They are works of poetry. And like all songs and all poems, the Psalms deal with our emotions. The Psalms touch us deeply where we are. They deal with the reality of our situation. There's a number of different types of Psalms, different uh, focuses, focuses, foci, <laughs> different things that the Psalms focus on. Um, there's one section called the Psalm of Lament. And those are Psalms where a person just pours out his heart and, and quite literally vents and, and complains. It's the brutal, there are Psalms of brutal honesty where people express the difficult times that they're going through. There are Psalms of prayer where, where you're calling out to God and asking him for his help and asking him for his intervention in your situation. There are songs of worship, not of songs that just, just are filled with worship to God and who he is. They, they are psalms that acknowledge who God is and that tell us that if he can be our comfort. They are psalms of complaint, psalms of prayer or calling out to God, psalms of comfort. And there are times in Psalms when all three are in one of the 150 Psalms. They're all together in one. And Psalm 13 is one of my favorite Psalms. It's only six verses long, but it's a classic. It has all three elements of a Psalm in it. And it, I think through that teaches us and shows us how we can connect with God, how we can relate with God. Let me show you the first couple of verses. The first couple of verses in Psalm 13, I would call this the complaint. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sore in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? It's a psalm of crying out to God in, in complaint. Lord, how long? Have you ever had those kind of questions go through your head, Lord, how long? How long is this situation going to go on? How long will my finances be so bad? How long will it be that my children are just estranged from my family and not mocking with God? How long will this physical issue and this medical issue um, hit my life? When will things change? We, we all come in situations where we get asked, when we ask those kinds of questions, and, and we see them right here in the Psalms, right here in the Bible. Somebody, the psalmist, who follows God and loves God, is asking these how long questions. And he asks, how, has God forgotten me? Jesus cried that out from the cross. My God, have you forsaken me? Um, we begin to wonder, will, will God hear my prayer? Um, are my prayers just kind of hitting the ceiling and not going any further? Will God hear me? Um, how long will I wrestle with my thoughts? How long will this negativity inside my head just keep um, tying me down and weighing me down? And day after day, the psalmist says, my hard times continue. He is expressing honestly his, his perception of his situation before God, his reality that he's going through. And these two verses, which are examples of what we see in many parts of the Psalms, tell me that it's okay to be honest with God. It's okay to, to lay out your complaint, to lay out your situation, to, to vent, to tell God, this is how I feel. This is what my life situation is making me feel like. It's okay to have, to have these honest feelings before God about, about our life and a better situation. The next two verses focus on what I call the, the calling out to God. 
praying to God. So the psalmist lays out his life situation. And then he says, look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. He has taken his venting, his complaining, and he has turned it upward to God. And he's saying to God, I need an answer. I need your help. Look at my situation, and please help me. He lays out his situation before God and lays out how, how he sees it before God and asks, God for an answer. And so this psalm shows us that while it's good and okay to be honest before God and to lay out our feelings and to vent, it's important not just to end there. Some commentators in Christianity today, some, some songwriters in Christianity today, will create literature and create songs that are psalms of lament. They lay out the complaint before God. But it kind of stops there. It's so important to be honest before God, but not to forget that God is near. That God does want to hear and answer our prayers. That we can call on him. That we move from that venting to that place where we go, God, help me. I need an answer here. Praying for an answer and looking to God for that hope that we need. Calling out to God for an answer to the honest complaint that we have. And then the last two verses in Psalm 13 lay out what I would call, the stick with the letter C, I would lay out the comfort that is provided. After the psalmist lays out his complaint, the reality of his situation, honestly before God, and then turns to God in prayer and saying, help, I need help here. The final two verses, he lays out who he acknowledges God to be and worships God for who he is. He writes, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. In the midst of my complaint and my pain and my prayer, I acknowledge who God is. And I worship him for who he is. I always call these things at the end of Psalms the uptick. Uh, I had a student in my youth group years ago who was very good at poetry and very good at, at laying out her feelings before God, kind of like a psalm of lament. And I always used to encourage her in that because it's part of the Psalms. I think it's a, an important part of our dealing with our emotions and our feelings and our situations before God. But some of her poems just kind of stopped at feeling really crappy, <laughs> really lousy, and really bad. And um, there was no what I would call uptick. There was no uh, hope at the end. So I always used to encourage her, okay, you've laid out 20 verses, 20 lines, not 20 verses, it was a long poem. 20 lines of um, how you feel. Now, how about a couple of lines of hope? A couple of lines of prayer before God. A couple of lines of what God can do for you and who God is. And so all the Psalms always, no matter how honest they are and how sometimes even depressing they can be when we read about the person's situation, there's always the up. There's always that acknowledgement. And in this psalm, the psalmist acknowledges that God can be trusted. And sometimes in our lives, that's the only truth we can hang on to, that God can be trusted. A real significant point in my life is when I was in my early 30s, and I was very sick for about six months, and I had to quit college. I was in Bible college at the time. I had to quit work. And nobody could really put their finger on exactly what was wrong with me. And I always remember one night, about four months into it, just praying before God and, and laying out my complaint and being very honest with my feelings. And then coming to the place where I felt like all I could pray were these three words over and over again. I trust you, 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 I trust you. 
And I said that to God over and over again until I believed it, until it was firm in my heart, until I knew that in the middle of these really difficult and confusing circumstances, I could trust God. And this passage says, I will trust in your unfailing love. God loved us without fail through everything. And then my heart rejoices in my salvation. The uptick reminds us that our salvation, our relationship with God, the fact that he has forgiven us, sent his spirit to live inside of us and to walk with us through everything, that is the most important thing in life. And that is the foundation of what we can rest on, even in those times when we are saying, how long? How long is this going to last? I can trust God and I can put down my foundations in God's salvation and what he has provided for me. And then he goes on in this uptick, tells us that God is worthy of our praise. That he is the God that is worthy to be praised. And that reminds us that God is God and I'm not. And that God sees the big picture of things, and I can't. I see the here and now. I might see a little bit around it. But God sees the big picture and wants to walk us through all the difficult times and walk us into what's next in that big picture. I heard a good example one time about, um, I don't even know what to call it. I guess it's like pro these crocheting things, these handicrafts that people do. And if you look at the top side of it, you will see a really nice picture that someone has made. But if you look on the underside of it, you can see a shadow of what that picture is and a kind of an image of it. But you also see pieces of wool and yarn kind of straggling down. And, and it doesn't, you get sort of get a feeling of what's going on, but you can't really see what the big picture really looks like, what it looks like on the other side. We see the scraggly end part where you can a shadow of what things are supposed to be. But God sees the finished picture, the big picture. And he is worthy of our praise that he is overall and is sovereign and in control. Even in those times when we're asking God, how long? How long is this going to go on? And then the psalmist finishes by saying that God is good to me. An author, what was his name, Jerry Bridges, wrote something in a book that talked about suffering. And he reiterated over and over again that God works all things out for our good and for his glory. Romans 8, 28 says that God works all things out for our good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And those two things are not mutually exclusive. God is glorified through all the things that we go through, through the good that he works in our lives. He wants to work things out for our good. And sometimes we look at it, we kind of go, is this really for our good? Is this really what you had in mind, God? This isn't what I had in mind. And that's where we have to re remember and remind ourselves that God works all things out as well for his glory. And, and the two things come together to create a life that God has created us for. There's 150 Psalms. And I would pretty well guarantee that if you look through them and get to know them, you'll probably find at least one that can relate to the life situation that you're going through. And the Psalms teach us that it's okay to honestly bent before God and to tell him the way you see life right now, and if the way you see life right now is very bad, and, and things just aren't going well, I think God wants to hear that. He's okay with that. But he also wants us to call on him, to come before him in prayer and ask for his help, and ask for an answer to what you're going through. And then he wants us to have that little uptick at the end, where we receive comfort. We recognize and acknowledge who God is. Even in the midst of all that we're going through, we can step back and come into his presence and realize who he is and how much he loves us and how much he 
can be trusted and how much good that he wants to work in our lives through the circumstances that we might be able to Use the Psalms. Use this songbook to really hit home with what you're going through and to help you look upward to a God who's trusted, who can be trusted, and wants to do good things in your life. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for 66 books that are all so different and all um, touch on the different parts of our lives. I thank you for the Psalms that through the art of poetry and songs speak to our emotions and speak to how we're feeling, especially if things aren't going well. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to use the Psalms to express ourselves to you, to realize that there are others in history who are feeling the same way that we are. Thank you, Lord, that we could be honest for for you and lay our complaints before you. Thank you, Lord, that you were there. That even when it seems like uh, our prayers are hitting the ceiling, we know and trust that you hear and that you do answer. And we thank you, Lord, that we can trust you for who you are, that you are good. And that you would just remind us of that over and over and over again. And that you will work all things out in our lives for your glory and for our good. Walk with us, Lord, in whatever situation in life we're facing. May the Psalms speak to us in very special ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching this on June the 28th, uh, next week will be the week that we're back in church again. This will be the last time for a while that I'll be talking to you from my office. From all these books in the background, some of which I've actually read. Um, Next week we'll be in church and if you're able to join us and you feel comfortable joining us, we'll be here practicing social distancing and all the other protocols that the province wants us to put in place for meeting in church. And we will put on our YouTube site after next Sunday an audio version of um, the message. If we, won't, uh, we don't have the wherewithal, the, you know, all that techie, <laughs> so we don't have the capability to live stream or to video but we will have the audio along with some slides that go with it um, for next week and for the, the weeks to come with our messages. So if you're still not able to come out to church or not, don't feel like it's quite time yet, then you can still uh, enjoy the messages and some music from our YouTube channel. So have a great week. Uh, happy Canada Day this week. If you're listening in Canada. And uh, God bless. We'll talk again soon.